Thank you. Welcome back. Um, we'll just continue from where we stopped. Um, so we uh, were looking at some of the fruits of meditating on God's word. Um, sorry, I'm just going to... Okay. Um, you are able to see the slide show? Oh, sorry. Let me just try that again. Yeah. So uh, we're looking at uh, some of the fruit that uh, is born through the Word of God, uh, specifically through meditating on the Word of God. Um, and we looked at um, being born again, experiencing healing and life in our bodies, um, having wisdom, understanding, insight, uh, seeing prosperity, fruitfulness, success. And uh, the last one is spiritual growth and maturity. If someone can read Acts 20.32 for us. Acts 20.32 So now, brethren, I commend you to go you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Thank you. So uh, the word of God brings us to a place of spiritual maturity. Uh, so as we're meditating on God's word, these are just a few examples of things that we can uh, expect to see uh, bear fruit, some of the fruit that we can expect uh, to see in our lives. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, what other ways the word can impact us. Um, so um, before we do that, let's just uh, look at how we can start to practice meditation um, in our own day-to-day uh, spiritual walks, how can we be implementing this um, this discipline of meditation. Uh, so there are three different ways we see in these, uh, we look at in these uh, verses from Psalm 119. The first is practicing it daily. Um, so this is in our daily time with the Lord, uh, using meditation in the ways uh, as we are um, as we're studying God's word, as we're reading God's word devotionally, uh, doing that using this process of meditation. Uh, we'll also look at in special needs. So that is when we are having uh, difficult circumstances, when there is something that we're facing, uh, a specific uh, season that we're going through, how can we uh, meditate on God's word to see uh, God uh, take us through that situation. And then the last is uh, doing it uh, with the purpose of uh, seeing it impact us and strengthen us spiritually. Uh, so if we can, uh, if someone can read these verses for us, we'll read Psalm 119.97 first. Psalm 119, 97th verse. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Thank you. So uh, this is uh, something um, where we are doing it not only every day, but throughout the day also. Uh, that the word is um, in our hearts, in our minds, uh, constantly something that we are dwelling on, thinking about. Um, and allowing it to uh, influence the way we are living. Uh, now, um, this uh, does require discipline on our parts, right? Uh, we uh, must uh, come to it as something that we are going to do, something that we are determined to do, uh, something that we commit 
uh, to do for uh, in order to see all of these promises bear fruit in our lives, the promises in God's word. Um, it while we do want it to be a discipline, uh, we also want to come to a place of delighting in God's word. So that is the discipline where we make that time, where we set apart time, where we um, make sure that nothing else takes us away from spending time in God's word. Uh, but we don't want it to become uh, something that is boring or routine or uh, something that we are forcing ourselves to do or being forced to do. Um, we want to come to a place of delighting in God's word. As we make this a daily practice, um, we start to look forward to it. We see um, the benefit. We see uh, the gift of being invited into God's presence. Right, Like we said, uh, it's through meditating on God's word that we commune with God, right? So we are actually coming into God's presence. We are being with him in this time of meditation. And so uh, moving from a daily practice to becoming something uh, that, that we look forward to every day. Um, can we also read verses 23, 24, and 78 of the same chapter? 23. Princess, also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. 78th verse. Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood, but I will meditate on your precepts. Thank you. So uh, here the psalmist is talking about um, certain... Um, difficulties that he's facing especially with people right or people are coming against him uh, and his response was to meditate on god's word to remain in god's word um so we see that as a way to uh speak god's word to meditate in god's word is to speak god's word over those situations so when we are facing trying times uh, whether it comes in the form of challenges uh from people or personal uh, struggles that we're facing whatever it may be uh we uh go to the word of god and specifically to the word as it is relevant to the situation that we are facing. Um, so if it is uh, challenges with people, what are some promises that we can claim of, uh, where God has promised that he is on our side, right? Um, that he will fight for us, uh, that we can rest in him all of those things uh if it is personal struggles that we are facing uh what are some promises that we can claim from god's word uh, in relation to those struggles that we are facing um so like we look at with a seed uh when we plant a seed the fruit that is born is uh whatever seed we've planted right we plant a uh, a tomato seed and then we expect a plant a tomato plant to grow up uh, grow out of it and so this is the same principle we use here we look at scriptures relevant to the situation uh, to see the fruit from that word uh, be born in our lives and so even as we were talking about meditating on scriptures that are mentioned in the end of this book, um, that's that's the intention behind it, uh, that those verses are clubbed according to themes uh, based on our need. So if uh, we want to see our faith increase, then we meditate on scriptures relating to faith. Um, and we can expect that those scriptures will uh, help us grow in faith. Uh, will help us grow in our confidence in God. Um, so uh, that's the that's the way. In times of challenge, uh, in challenging times, we can meditate on a word or different passage of scripture relating to those times. Uh, and then the last is a purposeful exercise. So Psalm 148. If someone can read that, please. My eyes are awake. Through the night watches, 
that I may meditate on your word. Thank you. So uh, this is um, uh, something that we do, even though it is challenging sometimes. Uh, so sometimes there may be um, sacrifices that we need to make in order to remain in God's word, in order to meditate on God's word. But we do it uh, knowing that uh, it's worth the um, it's worth the sacrifices that we're making. Uh, if someone can also read 1 Timothy 4, 7. Four, seven and eight, uh, 1 Timothy verses, uh, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. First Timothy, please, please go ahead, Jim. No, no, please go. Okay. First Timothy 4, 7 to 8. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is that now is and of that which is to come. Thank you. So uh, we see here. Uh, talk uh, the talk of exercise right so uh, to use this in terms of uh, this practice of meditation is as we do it as a regular exercise just as we would uh, if we were training ourselves physically there is sacrifice there are challenges uh, there are things we're going to have to give up in order to uh, grow in physical strength in the same way to grow spiritually we have to make certain sacrifices uh, and it's as we make those sacrifices like we read in Psalm 119 148 uh, he's uh, awake through the night, uh, meditating on God's word, right? So that's a sacrifice that is being made in order to spend time in God's word. Um, so it's through those sacrifices that we grow uh, and we become stronger spiritually. Um, so here are some practical ways in which we can meditate on God's word. Uh, these are, uh, so what I've put in bold there, these are ideas, not rules, right? So these are just some suggestions that are given in the book uh, for ways we can look at how we can personally start to meditate on God's word. Uh, but we don't need to follow this way exactly. Uh, we don't need to even follow any of these things. We might find another way that um suits us better or that uh that we find to impact our own lives and we can choose those ways these are just some suggestions uh, that are given so the first one is word seeds uh which is um meditating on certain verses uh that uh, are all related to a specific topic which is what the last chapter of the book uh has right so um <clears throat> The reason we do that is because we want to see a specific thing manifest in our lives. Uh, and so we focus on that topic and we meditate on that topic. Uh, and the benefit of it is, uh, first of all, that like we looked at the example of a natural seed, whatever the seed you're sowing is, that's the plant that's going to grow. Uh, in the same way as we are meditating on these verses related to that topic, we expect that that's going to bear fruit in our lives. Now, uh, the other thing is that it also helps us with our memorization of scripture. If we're constantly meditating on that topic uh, through a certain season in our lives, um, then um, those verses become ingrained in us because we have spent so much time on them. Uh, and so it's easy to recall them uh, when we need to, uh, when we're facing challenges, when something comes up in relation to that uh, same uh, thing that we, the reason we were meditating on that word, uh, it's easy for us to recall God's word and God's truth in relation to that. The second is uh, meditation uh, routine uh, through the week. So um, 
we use the example of if you have a physical exercise routine, uh, there's usually a different focus for each day, right? So um, if you're going to a gym, you're focusing on your legs, your arms, your chest, your back uh, on different days, and then you repeat that routine every week. So uh, taking the similar uh, approach to the word of God and meditating on different topics through each day of the week, um, and then repeating that every week. So every uh, Sunday you do one topic, every Monday you do the, another topic, every Tuesday. Um, that is another way that you can um, you can practice meditating on God's word and seeing all of these different uh, different seeds being sowed into your life. And then the third is contemplative Bible reading, which is um, so this is in contrast to, say, uh, trying to finish um, the whole Bible within a year, right? So when you're trying to uh, read the whole Bible through the year, you are reading multiple chapters um, and uh, often not spending a lot of time uh, focusing in on a specific word. Uh, with contemplative Bible reading, it's where you choose a smaller passage and you just spend time uh, reflecting on that specific. It may be a verse or a few verses. You may do it for one day. You may do it for a few days. Uh, just focusing on that word and really allowing God to speak to you through that word. Uh, so uh, the benefit of that is uh, that you really go much deeper into the word of God. Uh, the benefit of going through the whole Bible is that you get that overall message of the scriptures. This one will be uh, when you're doing contemplative Bible reading is where you're going deeper into a specific topic or a specific passage uh, of scripture. Um, so uh, an example of this might be if you are um, if you are in a season or uh, you are uh, experiencing something where you can minister healing to someone, then what are some scriptures you can meditate on related to healing? Uh, so you can uh, you can reflect on uh, things like the believer's anointing, the believer's authority, uh, the gifts of the spirit, on promises of healing through the word of God. So focusing in on a specific topic and uh, just um, meditating on those passages specifically. So you can do that whether it's with the word seeds or with the daily word meditation or with the contemplative Bible reading. But with the contemplative Bible reading, it will typically be a very, very small passage. So maybe a verse or two, um, just focusing in on those verses. OK, so with that, we come to the end of uh, the chapter on meditating on God's word. And we move into the next chapter, which talks about how do we take care of the seed that is planted. Uh, so when we are planting the word of God in our hearts, how do we make sure that that word is protected and nurtured? Uh, so we'll read these three passages, Matthew 13, 19, Mark 4, 14 and 15, and Luke 8, 11, and 12. Mark chapter 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Mark. Mark 4, 14. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Thank you. Luke 8. Mark 
Luke 8, 11 and 12. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Least they should believe and be saved. Thank you. So uh, we see in all these um, these passages of the same parable that Satan is the one who comes and takes away the word uh, from our hearts, right? So the word is there. The word is being sown, um, and it's being sown in our hearts. But Satan, um, his goal is to keep us from hearing the word of God, to keep us from understanding the word of God, and to keep us from believing the word of God. Uh, so um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all use different words, right? Uh, uh, Matthew uses um, hearing the word. Uh, Mark uses understanding, and Luke says believing uh, so he uh, satan's goal is to keep us from uh, doing that and by uh, taking away the word of god uh, he then uh, makes it basically unfruitful in our lives uh, so why is it important to know that so if someone can read second corinthians 2 11 Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Yes. So uh, in 2 Corinthians 2, um, it is uh, a, a different context, obviously, that there, there is somebody who has been sinning in the church and they uh, want to restore him to the church. Uh, so that Satan will not out with them. But uh, this principle that we need to be aware of the schemes of Satan. Uh, and when we are aware, then we can protect ourselves uh, against his schemes, right? Uh, so uh, if we know that Satan is after the word, what must we be doing to make sure that the word is protected and nurtured, uh, to make sure that it isn't taken away from us? Um, so uh, the, we must hear the word, right? So he he's trying to keep us from hearing the word. So we must hear the word. He's trying to keep us from understanding the word. We must receive the word. And he's trying to keep us from believing it. Uh, and so our response is to nurture God's word, to increase our faith in God's word. Uh, and so we must hear, receive, and nurture God's word uh, in our hearts. Um, will someone please read 1 John 2.14 for us? First uh, John 2.14 I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Thank you. So uh, we see here um, that uh, through the word of God, uh, we have victory, right? Uh, so God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Uh, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So... Uh, it's through God's word being in our hearts that we are able to defeat Satan. Uh, that's what this verse says. So Satan knows that. Satan knows that if God's word is abiding in our hearts, uh, if it has taken root in our hearts, then we have defeated him. He has no place. Uh, he has no power in our lives. And so before God's word can take that place in our lives, his goal is to... Um, take it away from our hearts before it can take root, before it can actually uh, become strong in our hearts. 
Uh, and so what are some ways in which he keeps us from hearing God's word? Uh, it might be uh, simply through uh, preoccupying us, right? We have so many other things to do, maybe very important things, um, but all of those things distract us or keep us away from actually even going to God's word and hearing it. Or even if we're sitting in church, uh, we're hearing God's word, but we are not interested in what we're hearing or we are uh, not interested in really um, drawing the truth from what is being said um, or we're just distracted by other things there are so many things on our mind and we may be the word may be coming to us but nothing is actually entering our minds or our hearts it's just uh coming to us and going, coming in from one year and going out the other year. Uh, the other thing is um, he prevents us from understanding it. Uh, this may be through bringing in uh, false teaching, to bring in confusion, to bring in uh, some kind of deception or lies that keeps us from fully understanding what the truth of uh, that passage is or that word is. And then he also prevents us from believing it. So this is bringing in doubt, bringing in fear, bringing in unbelief that keeps us from believing God's word. Um, so how can we then protect ourselves against this, protect ourselves against distractions, busyness, uh, laziness when it comes to uh, studying God's word? Uh, protect ourselves against deception, against lies, against uh, doubts, against fears. Uh, what can we do to make sure that when we are going to God's word, that word remains in our hearts uh, and actually takes root and bears fruit? Um, so uh, one is to protect it against any threats and hindrances that may come. Uh, we see in in this parable that the threats and hindrances that are mentioned are persecution and hardship, right? So uh, when there is something that comes directly against the word that we have received, uh, right? So we've received a word and uh, for example, even the simple uh, thing of receiving the gospel, when we heard the good news, um, there is uh, the threat of other people who are our loved ones, our family, who will come against us because we have received the gospel, because we have believed in Jesus. And so how do we uh, protect ourselves against that threat that is very real uh, and uh, can be very, very challenging? Um, the other is the cares of this world uh, that we see in this parable. So the cares of the world, uh, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things, the pleasures of life. So other, um, other things that are drawing us away from God's word. So God's word is calling us to a certain way of living, is calling us to make certain um, sacrifices, certain choices. But then there's also the world that is saying, something else completely or there is our personal responsibilities our obligations that are drawing us away from what we see in god's word so how do we make sure that um we continue to remain in god's word in the face of these challenges uh, we look more uh, in detail at these threats and hindrances in the following chapters uh, but this is one thing so protecting against these kinds of threats um, the other thing is to uh, constantly be remaining in God's word. Uh, we'll read these three verses, Ephesians 5, 26, Psalm 119, 105, and Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Thank you. Uh, Psalm 119, 105. I'll read, sister. Yes, please.
your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path thank you and uh, ephesians 5 18 and 19 And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Thank you. So, um, so it's the word itself that will strengthen us in our spirits. So we not only uh, meditate on God's word, but we continue to remain in God's word. So when we, we saw in Ephesians 5.26, the word cleanses us. So the word uh, removes what is wrong, removes uh, what is uh, deceitful, uh, the lies that we are hearing, and brings in truth. Um, just like, uh, so Ephesians 5.26 talks about the word as water, and Psalm 100, 105 talks about the word as light. Uh, so why these two verses are mentioned here is like a seed requires water and sunlight. Uh, similarly, with uh, the word of God, when we are planting that seed in our heart, we continue to remain in that word. And that word will strengthen us um, just like water and sunlight nurtures the seed that is planted, uh, a physical or a natural seed that's planted, the word itself will strengthen the seed uh, that we have planted in our hearts. So we continue to remain in that word, continue to dwell on that word, continue to confess that word um, over our lives uh, so that we are dwelling in the truth, we're remaining in the truth. And Psalm 119, 105, uh, it's a light unto our path. So it shows us how we should keep walking. Uh, it gives us direction. It helps us know right from wrong. Uh, it helps us see where there is danger helps us to know uh, how do we keep walking in God's ways. And then Ephesians 5, 18 and 19 uh, talks about um, being filled with the Holy Spirit. So apart from meditating on God's word, we also uh, walk in the spirit, right? We, uh, we are allowing the Holy Spirit to be the one who leads us, who directs us, who um, empowers us to continue to walk uh, in line with God's word. And then in verse 19 of Ephesians 5, uh, it talks about how uh, we are to encourage one another with the word of God. And so to have fellowship with other believers uh, who are encouraging you to continue walking in the word of God. So it says singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. Uh, right. So all of these things are uh, coming uh, from uh, other believers who are also being filled with the Holy Spirit, who are encouraging us in our walk with, with the Lord. Uh, so how do we nurture the seed? What are the three things we do? to nurture the seed that we've planted, the seed of God's word that we've planted in our hearts. Listen to the God's word, understand the word of God, and believe the word of God and declare it. Thank you. So we uh, we listen, we understand, we believe. Uh, so uh, that is Satan's goal is to keep us from hearing, from understanding, from believing. So we make sure that we hear that. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Is what we uh, we see in this last point here. We meditate on God's word, we walk in the spirit, and we fellowship with other believers. Um, those are three ways to nurture uh, the word of God. Okay, We continually meditate on God's word. We walk in the spirit and we fellowship with other believers. Um, these are ways we can make sure that uh, we are providing that additional nurturing for the word that we have planted in our hearts. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, we'll look at this parable, and I think uh, we'll close with this for today, Mark 4, 26 to 29. If someone can read that for us. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rest, rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade and then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain repents, Immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Thank you. So uh, immediately after this parable uh, of the sower, uh, soon after this uh, we see another parable in Mark 4 and then we see the parable of the seed, which is what we just read. Um, so there are some things we see in this parable about how a seed is sown, right? Uh, or how we see fruit born when we plant a seed. One thing is the seed has to be sown. The seed has to be actually put in the ground for it to bear fruit. Um, so it says uh, uh, he scatters seed on the ground. The farmer scatters seed on the ground. Uh, the second is that it takes time for it to grow. So night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. Uh, so wh whether the farmer is doing something or not, uh, that seed is actually, there is something happening with the seed. The farmer may not um, be awake at all times, right? He is asleep at some times when he's awake, he may take care of the soil, he may do all those kinds of things. But he uh, he does all of that. But what is happening underground is something that he does not fully understand. Um, so uh, that is happening underground. And it will only be in time that he sees it start to sprout. Uh, it will take some time. And so uh, similarly with the word of God, uh, the seed must be sown in our hearts. Uh, but then after that, uh, we just have to be diligent and faithful with nurturing that word. OK, uh, so we continue to meditate. We continue uh, to walk in the spirit. We continue to encourage ourselves through fellowship with other believers. And we uh, continue to protect that word that has been sown in our hearts against other challenges that come in. Uh, and as we do that, even if the fruit has not, we don't see it immediately, uh, if it, over time, it will start to sprout. It will start to show fruit. Um, and the fruit may be small initially, but it will start to become bigger and bigger. It will start to multiply. Uh, so um, we see here uh, uh, that the, the leaf, the blade pushes through. And then the wheat is formed. And finally, the grain ripens. So all of that takes time. Uh, and it says the, uh, that this happens without him fully understanding. So similarly, we may not fully understand how the seed is going to bear fruit. Uh, we may not fully understand uh, what the process is that God is going to use. But we are faithful in the things that we know we need to do. And we trust God to do the rest. And uh, the last part is when the harvest comes, uh, it is uh, we have a part to play in getting that harvest. Right? We go out and gather the harvest uh, that comes from having um, planted that seed, having nurtured the seed, uh, and having been faithful to take care of it uh, till we see the harvest come. So. Um, we will stop with that for now and we'll uh, come back for our third hour if anyone has any questions any thoughts you'd like to share yes pastor just a, a quick thought on sowing of seeds there's this uh, chinese saying about uh, 
a particular seed that is a, a particular plant called the Chinese bamboo. Unlike other plants, when we sow a seed and we water it, we know that we're going to expect results within a, a few days or a matter of weeks. But the Chinese bamboo, when it's planted, for four years, you see no results. No. And so people, uh, sometimes when you invest, uh, when, 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 uh, when God is investing in our lives, we don't see results for, for a long time. Going back mm -hmm. to the Chinese bamboo, so you might have to water it and nurture it for four years. But mm -hmm. after the period of four years, within two months, it grows to a height of 90 feet. Now, if we mm -hmm. stop watering it or if we start, stop nurturing that the Chinese bamboo in the early stages, it will die. It will not yield. So it's, it's, it's a kind of lesson. Though it's an old ancient proverb, it's a lesson that some, sometimes when God is investing in our lives, it takes time for it to bear fruit. But we should uh, just... Uh, Keep nurturing it and stay in the word. That's all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, um, so a follow up to that is then uh, what I had shared earlier that uh, this week uh, we'll all choose a specific topic uh, or a specific passage that we want to meditate on. Um, and We'll use these three steps of um, contemplation, visualization, and confession. Uh, so we do those three things. And when we come back for class on Monday, um, we can share some of the things that we've experienced as we've practiced this uh, meditation. Uh, also, feel free to post on Google Classroom. So you can post, and you can share in class, or you can do either. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. We'll take a break now and we'll be back um, in about 15 or 17 minutes uh, for the next class, New Testament survey. Thank you.